Hello everyone and welcome back to The Little Quilter. Today we're gonna to be working on the next part of the pas de deux quilt. Um, we are still on month one of the quilt and I'm doing the next step, which is going to be using these circle squares and making basically a square and then appliquing this circle block in there. So if you want this template design, then you're gonna have to purchase the quilt design and it is the Pas de Deux Quilt by Rachel Hauser. It is a beautiful quilt design. You get, originally it was released as a block of the month and now you can purchase it and get all of the blocks of the months all at once. That was hard to say. Um, I wanted to start with showing you guys this design. So, and I'll do a little bit of a close up as well, but basically you get this template to make your circles and you're gonna have to applique this on. I have never done applique before, so this may be a bit like the blind leading the blind. What I've actually done is taken my sewing machine and I have stitched a quarter of an inch all the way around. I'm not sure that it's an exact quarter of an inch, but I have stitched all the way around this circle. What I am planning on doing here is actually doing a little bit different than what she recommends doing. So she has directions on there on telling you how to do routine applique or machine stitching applique. And we're gonna do a little bit of the in the middle. So I'm gonna jump into showing you guys how I did this. Um, I'm not gonna show you actually stitching this. I literally just stitched on this. Remember, if you do this, you should probably change your needle. But what I'm gonna use this quarter inch line is going to be my marker for my template for actually cutting this circle out and cutting out my templates. So let's jump into that and I'll show you more. So the next thing I'm going to do is get my blue fabric. I'm not going to get the fabric that I used in the previous blue of the half square triangles just because I'd like to do something a little bit different and kind of make sure that I use all of the fabric. I have these. I also have this one in a larger print. So these are all the blue fabrics from that purchase of laundry basket quilts. So we're gonna get rid of this one because it's got, it does have blue in it, but it's got a lot more green gray. And this one seems to have a little bit more green color to it. Then I'm left with these. Before I make any final decisions, I'm also gonna go ahead and get out the there we go. I'm going to get out the yellow. All right, so initially here I'll go here. Okay, so here is the yellow that we're dealing with. Ooh, that one's a really fun one. A few more options too. And then I feel like these are really yellow, comparatively. So there's that one. But I feel like these are more yellow. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and not use these. Which to be fair, a lot of these are more tan. We're gonna use these yellows, so three blues. I'm not gonna use this one because I used it in a previous one. I don't want a lot of white either, so I'm gonna get rid of these. All right, so now we're left with these. And I think I'm gonna go hard decision actually. I definitely like these two and then I'm in between these two. This one is very unique. Let's look at it with these. I don't know why but I'm drawn to this one. That may be a, a poor decision but we're gonna do that. 
Okay everybody, so now I've got all of my pieces cut to the right size. I'm going to go ahead and create the blue block with the yellow around it and then we will actually do the applique block in the center and I'll show you guys how I'm going to do that. So I am going to kind of lay them out just to make sure I like the style and the look because while this is going to be a scrappy look to the quilt, I also want it to be look nice, right? So I'm using lots of different collections to give it that scrappy look, but I want to make sure that nothing's clashing as I'm putting everything together or going right next to each other. So let's do that. Okay, so I have laid out all of my yellow cuttings for this quilt block, and some of these have to become that center circle. So what I thought I would do to choose which ones go would be to set these out and sort of look at them, compare them, and decide that way, and just sort of talk through that. So I think that I'm going to choose a more solid pattern with this one because I think that that will just sort of set off more than having another a pattern, super patterned on top of another pattern. And so doing one like that, and then... I've got these two, and so maybe choosing something that's pretty contrasting. I really like this, but I feel like these are too close together. What about this? Mm, maybe it'll be good as just a background square. These contrast really well, but they're also very similar in pattern, and I think that would be not as good. Although it is kind of pretty, isn't it? Um, let's see. I think... I'm trying to think of it as a circle in there. So that... I don't know. Something about this is calling me. I know it's very similar. But maybe that's what really... I feel like either this... For this but I don't I think I think what I don't like is how tan this is and I like, I like how this is a lot more bright yellow so okay so I'm gonna go with that one okay so the next one I have is this center block and I think I've already decided that is too patterned on patterned too many flowers what about this that's not too bad. Let me see. I still feel like that's a lot of flowers. Now, I do have this other solid block, so, which does look really nice with that. Kind of sets off this background. Okay, and then I have this last one here. like this but I don't think that's gonna work that'll look odd I think we're I think this one I think this is the way to go okay so I think these are gonna be my circles I think that looks good let's swap these and see real quick because because mm. I don't think that one matters I feel like this one looks better with this one I think it it contrasts a little more, and this one is a little more washed out against the color, like that back graininess that's there. And this one kind of gives it a oomph. Okay, and I don't think it really matters on this one here. Like this one is just, you know, either way. I am a little sad. I'm going to have to cover up this cute little snail, and that makes me so sad. Poor snail. Okay, now that I've got that decided, I'm going to cut the rest of these to size, and then we'll go over cutting out this template, and I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do that. So, applique, here we come. Okay, everybody, so I have got all of my, well, all, I have got my squares done and squared up, so they look pretty good. Now, what I've got to do is I have to make my applique, and there are some pretty common ways and Rachel Hauser in her PDF directions goes over those common ways, but I am not going to do 
applique the way that they recommend doing it. And that's just because it is time consuming and it requires me to hand stitch and I don't want to do that at all. Um, I've never done applique before, but that seems way too time consuming and probably why I haven't done applique. So I have this giant thing. I mean, it's huge. I have no idea what I was going to do with this. I don't even remember purchasing it. My assumption was there was a huge sale and so I bought a roll because it was super cheap. But it is a fusible interfacing, which also means that I can wash it, which means that I can attach it to my fabric and I can use that to attach to it. So what I have done here is the reason why I made this quarter inch seam around it is I'm actually going to cut my pieces a quarter of an inch larger than what I want and I'm going to cut fusible interfacing the same size and sew those together and then turn them inside out and I'll have a beautiful applique piece ready to put on. So that's my plan. Let's see if it works out. Okay, so now that I have sewed these around, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this just so I don't have a bunch of fabric because the magic is gonna be getting this So I'm going to go ahead and trim these around because the magical part is going to be whenever I flip them in, but I don't want them to have a lot of excess fabric to deal with in there. So I'm just going to trim all of these up. Okay, so now the reason that I cut that hole there is we are going to flip this simply they always say flip it inside out hopefully i haven't just screwed this up <laughs> oops Okay, so I kind of did it right. Um, what I messed up was, while yes, I did make a circle and I did use my fusible backing, um, the problem is, is that I put the fusible backing on the wrong way. So you should do right sides together when you do this and fusible backing, the bumpy side of the fabric is where the glue is at and I put the glue on the top side of it. So whenever I flipped it around, all of my fusible backing is now on the inside of my circle, which doesn't really help to attach it, but it's okay because we were still gonna sew it down anyways. And if I had just hand stitched around the edges, I still would have done the same thing. So it still works for what we need, but it doesn't quite make it as easy because with that, once you had it, you could just place it down. So what I'm going to do is take these and actually fold them in half, the center line of my block, and that will allow me to put that on there. And then I've chosen a thread color that actually really matches this pretty well. And so that will help to hide those stitches. Now, obviously, I'm going to be doing some long arm quilting over the top of it. so. It's not the end of the world 
um, that there are going to be stitches on there because at, in the end they'll blend in with everything else um, that I put on the quilt. So as you can see here, I've marked my center line. I will take this piece, pop that on there, and then just stitch around the edges. And Okay everybody, so it is finished and I'm pretty happy with it. Here is that half block. Um, I have not applicated this on. She didn't recommend doing that until um, later on in the quilt. So right now I've just got it pinned to it. And I think it turned out really nicely in all honesty. Um, no, the circles are not 100% perfect. But for the first time, I think it looks good. And honestly, from afar, you know their circles. It looks like the block. And I think that's all that really matters. You know, yes, if somebody gets up close, they're gonna notice that they're not quite perfect, but that's okay. As always, if you guys have questions about this project, the project is Pas de Deux Quilt by Rachel Hauser, and I've got it linked down below if you're interested in purchasing the pattern. And I hope that you guys will continue watching this process and have a wonderful day. Thanks.